21 shooting days. You know, we shot the entire film in 21 days. So that was also, you know, um, another challenge, you know, having a very, very tight shooting schedule, you know, with an entirely non-professional actress, you know. So there were so many, but these were a few ones that I can remember. Wow. Um, uh, most stories that come uh, from Africa uh, deal with like colonialism and war. Um, can you talk a little bit about the importance of telling like a love story, like from this perspective? Uh, absolutely. You know, um, I everything that has been, you know, like um, told about Somalia have been, you know, um, told, uh, you know, from a Western perspective, you know, and um, and, you know, at some point I was really so tired of us being, you know, represented in, in a completely different way that I, as an African, couldn't even relate to, you know, and I have never seen an African love story, you know, so I really felt like it was my responsibility to really, as a filmmaker, you know, to change the perspective and tell my own version of how I see myself, how I see, you know, um, you know, Africans and, you know, and especially, you know, the Somalis, you know, and, and uh, you know, and the, the love that I have been brought up with by my parents, you know, with the, the dignity and, and, you know, and the compassion and all those things that I never see on the screen, you know. So I really wanted to, um, to tell an African love story. So, um, yeah. Uh, how did you decide on the film's locations? Um, so, um, because Djibouti used to be a part of Somalia before the colonization, you know. Uh, so when I was writing the script, I couldn't imagine, you know, the film being set in anywhere else than Djibouti uh, because Djibouti had everything, you know, or all the locations that we had in the script. You know, the landscapes, you know, the ocean, you know, the, uh, you know, desert, you know, um, pretty much everything. So for me, it was a natural really choice to just go to Djibouti. And, you know, the majority of Djiboutians are Somalis, you know, so the language, the culture, the religion, everything's pretty much the same you know, Somalia. So, um so I have been suggested to to shoot the film, to set the film in a few other African countries. But I said no, because I couldn't see the story being the same, you know. So um, so for me, it was just really a natural choice to set the film in, in, in Djibouti. Thank you. Uh, can you talk a bit about uh, what it's like, like working as a filmmaker like, in Somalia? Ah, uh, I mean, you know, I... I came to Finland at the age of 16, you know, from Somalia, you know, as a refugee. So this was, you know, the first time that I have shot a film in Africa, you know. So um, I don't know much about, you know, being in, in a Somali filmmaker in Somalia, but I do know you know, what it's like to be a Somali filmmaker in Finland, that I know, you know, and um, and I think it's pretty much the same as, you know, um, all the other black filmmakers in, in Western countries, you know, the struggles are the same, um, you know, and, uh, and yeah. Um, like earlier, oh, you mentioned the actors being like non-professional um, and not having that much of a background. Um, could you talk a, look a, a, lot, a bit about the like, rehearsal process and what was it like to build like chemistry between them two? So um, the thing was, Omar, who plays Gulet, lives in Finland. Yasmi Warsan, who plays Nasra, is based in Canada, in Toronto. And the little boy is based in Djibouti. So we had three actors in three different continents, 
And this was a low budget film. It wasn't really, you know, and you know, a big budget film. So we couldn't get all the actors in the same room to have a table reading or to really you know rehearse. So um, Omar and Yasmin and I had a um, couple of um, Zoom um, table readings. But um, with Hadar, I really didn't want to give him the acting resp responsibility. So <clears throat> I didn't even give him a script. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, um, I, you know, had moments with him where I just explained about, you know, his character. Um, and then um, I gave him the, the, you know, the artistic freedom to really um, play how he wants it, you know, to play. I, di I didn't want him to feel like he was really acting or he was working. I want him um, to have fun on set. So we did a lot of uh, improvisations. We improvise, improvised a lot on, on set. You know, I would just give him the situation and he would just go and, and do it. So we really didn't rehearse, you know, rehearse uh, together a lot. And I didn't want, you know, them to rehearse a lot because I really want them, I wanted them to give a very, you know, authentic, um, you know, um, performances, you know, because they're not actors. So, um, so we just really, um, I, it was kind of like, you know, spontaneously, we just, you know, did it. And I would just throw them in, into the situation and, you know, give them a very, very detailed, very specific, you know, um, directions of where to look, how long to look, how to do it. Sometimes I would just have to jump you know, an act for them to really do it, you know, after me, for them to understand, you know, so I was sometimes an actor, you know, <laughs> and, um, um, but yeah, we, we, there was no rehearsals for us. It was just really, we, we, we just did it because we didn't have the time and the money to do so. Cool. Um, could you tell us uh, like one or two takeaways you want audience members like to like, walk away with? Um, you know, um, even though this is a very, you know, simple story, um, there are so many layers, you know, into the film. And, and I hope, you know, every audience member will take something away from it. Um, you know, depending on their personal, you know, um, life experiences or, you know, or their backgrounds. And, and so I just really hope that I don't have a like, you know, like a specific wish you know, or a specific thing that I really want them to take away from the film. But I just do hope that each um, audience member will take something um, depending on their personal um, experiences and, and their struggles or, you know, their, their, their perspectives. Thanks, Kadar. Um, anything that you have like coming down a pipeline that you're like working on next? Um, yeah. There's a TV series that we just did with uh, two of my other colleagues, and it's in post production now. And then there's some um, a short film that I'm uh, working on right now, and my second feature film, which is in the uh, early uh, writing stage. So yeah. Awesome. Well, we definitely look forward to seeing it. Um, I really enjoyed your work, but thanks for sharing it with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.